that one. Um, anyways, for in this example, the first thing we need to do is if they're asking for us to be able to find the zeros, then we simply follow along just like we were doing with our previous problems. We're going to set our equation equal to 0. And you can see that this is in factor form, so that's perfect. We don't actually have to do any factoring for this problem. We can just go and apply the zero product property. So we set each of our factors equal to 0. And then to find the zeros, we simply just solve. Well, we already have x equals 0, so we have x equals 2 and x equals negative 5 by solving. Does everybody understand? Yes, now, when previously we asked to find the zeros, we could just write it uh, like that or as a solution set. Right? And that was it. But now they're asking us to graph based on finding the zeros. So what we're simply going to do is remember that the real solutions are the same as our x-intercepts on the graph. So what we're going to want to do in this case is now plot these points. So I have negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 0, and I have positive 2. Now, to determine what the graph is, if these, if these zeros are going to be crossing or bouncing, we need to look at the multiplicity. Again, remember the multiplicity is the power of each one of our factors. Now, we might want to write this as, uh, I guess I lost my marker for that. We well, might want to write this as um, 0 equals x minus 0 instead of just x. But again, you would still see that the power of that is still a 1. So if the, if the multiplicity, which is the orange, right, what the factor is raised to, the multiplicity is odd, what does that tell us about each of those zeros? Does it, cro does it cross or bounce? Cross. Crosses. So therefore, at each of these zeros, my graph is going to cross. Does everybody agree with me? OK. Now we still need to figure out what is the shape of the graph. So we need to understand the multiplicity, or I'm sorry, the end behavior. Now, if we had a if we had a graph written in standard form, we would know that the end behavior is the high is the term that has the highest power, which we call our degree, Kaylee, and then we look at the leading coefficient and determine if that's positive or negative. This is not written out in polynomial form, is it? No. So you could multiply it so it's in polynomial form, or we can just do a little bit of thinking in our head. If I was to multiply, um, you know, let's just think of this, x minus 2 times x plus 5, I know that that would give me a x squared term. We don't need to actually figure out what the multiplication is. I know that the highest power that product would be would be 2. And x times x would give you x squared. There's not going to be a term that's going to give you something higher than that. Would you guys agree? You can't do x minus 2 times x plus 5, and you're going to get like x to the fifth, right? The highest it will be would be x squared. And then everything else is below. Then, if you multiply that by x, now my degree has gone from x, or my leading term has gone from x squared to what? x cubed. X cubed. So in reality, I have this y equals x cubed. Now, we don't really care about what the rest of it is, because we only care about the end behavior. So we need to look at this. If the degree here is 1, and the leading coefficient here, I'm sorry, the degree is 3, and the leading coefficient is 1. Well, the degree is odd, and the leading coefficient is positive. So based on the leading coefficient test that we did in our first homework, what would be the end behavior of this graph? Down, left, up, right. Or falls left, rises right. And now all you simply need to do is connect these two arrows by going through each of these zeros. Done. Okay. 